Hello YouTube RJ. Hey, this video is kind of a redo. I started a video and got into it and ran into problems and basically realized it wasn't going to work out so I stopped and we're starting over again. What I was doing is I had two, uh, let's look here, I've got two audio amp modules I got from AliExpress. One is a LM386 based one and one is a PAM8403. And what I intended to do was I wanted to introduce you to a piece of software called Arda. But I wanted to take these two audio amps and test them against each other. And so that was my intention. I wanted to compare the amplification of both of them and then compare the uh, harmonic distortion and see which one looked best. And the reason I'm doing this is for our shootout, if you've been following my channel, you know that we've built a couple shortwave radios, receivers. and I'm going to build another shortwave receiver, our own link shortwave receiver, and put it head-to-head -head in a shootout with them. So I've got to build that radio. That's what we're going to do. And I needed an audio amp, and I was going to build an audio amp, you know, typical 2N3904 amp. And then I remembered I had purchased these modules from AliExpress, and I thought, well, you know, why don't I check those out? Maybe I'll just use that instead. So I wanted to compare the two. So I started a video, and I ran into a little problem. I found this little jewel, which is the PAM8403, is not working correctly. I've, I've got a bad one. Yeah, it happens, especially AliExpress, where you're paying a dollar or two for these things. So I'm going to go ahead and kind of pick up back up where I was when I discovered this and, and just redo that part. Basically, I've got the LM386 here. And so what I wanted to do was I want to see how much amplification we can get out of it. What I've done is I've got it hooked up here. But first, I've got my signal generator. And notice that you don't have cables hanging in front of you. I, I reorganized the, uh, the rack up here to make sure that when I'm doing these things, these cables aren't between me and you. What I've done is I've set it up with a one kilohertz signal hooked to the speaker. I want to play around with the amplitude and find the lowest level that will drive the speaker at all to where I can barely hear it going. And then we're going to run it through the amplifier and we're going to see what kind of audio output we get. I'm going to take the scope and I'm going to measure it. And by measuring it with the oscilloscope, we're going to be able to see just how much signal we're getting out of this thing so that we can compare. And then we'll be able to tell how much amplification we're getting from the, the 386 amplifier. So let me kick this on. Okay, I can, I can hear it easily, no problem. I'm putting a 500 millivolt peak to peak in. So let me turn that down. Let me get the microphone over here. Sorry about any noise. Hopefully you can hear that. I'm going to turn it down. That's a hundred millivolt peak to peak. Thirty to forty millivolt peak to peak is about where I can hear it. I'm going to go fifty millivolt peak to peak right there. Let me get the scope fired up. That'll take just a second. Okay, I got the scope set up. Let me uh, let me move you around a little here if you don't mind. And uh, what we'll do is we'll just swing you down where you can see the scope. And you can see that uh, I'm on 10 millivolts. We're swinging about 20, 40 millivolts peak to peak. Okay. So uh, 10, 20, 30, just about 40. A little bit less, but pretty close to 40 millivolts peak to peak. So that's just what I'm putting in. I'm putting 50 in. Of course, we got a little bit of a load, got the speaker on there, so you're going to see some load put on it. We're seeing, I'm going to call that about 38 millivolts peak to peak. So let, let's go with that. Let's just reconnect all this up. Let's get this hooked up. I've got power hooked up. I've got it set up for 12 volts to feed that. So now we're going to put the same input into this LM386. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to kick on power to the LM386, and I'm going to turn the tone on. Okay, right off the bat, you can see we're going to have to make some adjustments here. So with the volume all the way down where I can't hear the speaker, I'm doing about 100 millivolt peak to peak. Turn the volume up. Okay, there is 200 millivolt peak to peak. I can, we can clearly hear this. Let me get the mic again. Sorry about any noises. You can clearly hear that. So I'm going to set my mic right here by the speaker. I'm going to try to. Hopefully you can still hear me just fine. So let's turn the volume up a little bit. And 
like distortion going on there. Let's adjust our scope a little. We're getting two volt peak to peak right now. Looking good. I see some flat, flat popping going on there. Let's get her back in control here. Why don't I turn on some measurements here? Okay. So there's two, four, six, eight. So 7.6 volts. So we're getting 7.6. We're going to keep going. Up. There's, almost, there's eight. I'm hearing some audio distortion. You can really see it there. So it looks like about 8 volts peak to peak is uh, about the maximum output. And it's, uh, you know, it's uh, loud enough. Let's turn that down. This adjusted about 2 volts peak to peak. Let me turn the signal off. Looks like we can get about 8 volts peak to peak out of this uh, with just 50 millivolts going in. 50 millivolts takes 20 of them to get to a volt. 8 times 20, about 160. So, unless my math's wrong, and I'm sure y'all let me know if I'm if I'm making a mistake, but uh, about 160 times, not too bad. I mean, that's why uh, these get used a lot in, you know, home-built radios and such. They do a pretty good job. question is, how, what kind of quality are we getting out of that? What kind of distortion is the amp doing? And that's where this software is going to come in. So, I've got a spectrum analyzer, as you know. And you would say, well, you can hook that up and see what the signal looks like. But the problem is, your spec, my spectrum analyzer anyway, starts at 9 kilohertz. That's kind of high for looking at audio signals. It's not really designed to do that. I'm not aware of a function in my Rigel that'll do uh, noise distortion, audio distortion. Now, if you've got like a, a 2015 multimeter that's actually designed to do this, um, that's great. I don't. Most people probably don't. So what do you do? Well, what if I told you there's free software that'll do this for you? Very nice software. It is not totally free. If you want to save and load files back to work with them, then there is a license to buy. But if you just want to look at the output of an amplifier and see what kind of noise we're looking at, total harmonic distortion, this is a perfect tool. You just run it in demo mode. They'll let you run it in demo mode forever. You just can't store anything. And the software is called ARTA, A-R-T-A. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna hook up cables to my sound card. I'll jump on the computer. I'll show you how this all gets hooked up and then we'll actually hook it up to this amp and we'll see how much distortion is coming out. So give me just a minute to get set up over there and I'll come back. Okay, we're on my computer and I've pulled up the help section of ARTA and just want to talk a little about how you connect ARTA up and then we'll actually get into using it. We're going to go into measurement setups and it's going to show you different ways that you can connect and do. ARTA is used a lot for specking out speakers for their audio response, for how much distortion they add. You've got a lot of different setups here. You, you see here, many of them have microphones where you hook up a speaker up and a microphone so that it can sample the sound coming out of a loudspeaker. But when you get into doing what we wanna do, it's a general measurement where we have a device under test where we're gonna put an amplifier in here, we're gonna input a signal, and we're gonna come back and measure what our distortion looks like. Now, we're a single channel, so we're not gonna make this connection. We're just gonna pass left in and then left from the output of our device under test, we're going to go right back into the left input. What I've done, I made up a cable, two cables, plug in to the back of the computer. Uh, where do they where do they plug in? But basically, your this is going to be your line in. Uh, your line is usually like a light blue on your sound card. I'm sorry, this is your out. This is your speaker out on your sound card, which is typically a green. Then you have a light blue line input, and that's where you're going to go in with this. So that's all I've done. Two cables come out, grounds are connected together, then left channel from the out and left channel from the in, and we're going to hook those to our device, and the sound card will generate audio, uh, which will then get pulled back in and measured, and it's going to give us kind of a, a view of what, what it sees. It's designed around audio, so it goes all the way down to zero hertz, and so this is the setup. So this is all I've done is this right here. We'll get that ready to go, and I'll be back, and we'll give this thing a try. Okay, I'm over on the bench, and here's what I've got. I've got two audio cables coming from my computer. Uh, the grounds here are connected together. 
This cable comes from the speaker. This cable comes from the line input of the sound card. So this is the left channel out of the speaker. This is the left channel in to the line input, and the grounds are together. Now, to use ARTA, we're going to start up ARTA here. And to use ARTA, let me pull it over here on the other screen. We don't have a license key, so we just do demo mode. And the software opens up. And the very first thing we want to do is go up here into this section and choose SPA, which is Spectrum Analyzer. And we've got to do a little setup. And so I'm going to walk you through the setup. It took me a little bit to get to work. I it pulled my hair out a little bit reading the instructions. So to make it simple, what I've learned is go to Setup and Audio Devices and make sure you're on Windows Multimeter Media Driver. And whatever your input is, my sound card's input is line in Realtek Audio, and my speaker is speakers out of the Realtek Audio. Make sure that's set. This will be set to 16 bit. Now, you may need to go in your control panel. This could be important. Make sure you go in your speakers under playback. Go to advanced and make sure you're 16 bit 48,000 hertz. If you're not, change it to that because that's what this program needs. Do the same thing under recording on. Here's my line in. Same thing here, 16 bit two channel 48,000. Make sure those are set. Once you have that set up, we have to do some calibration. We'll go back to setup, calibrate device. And what we need to do is take our voltmeter. I've got my O1 set up here. And hook your positive to your speaker out and your negative to your ground. Set your meter. To volt AC, I'm on millivolt AC. You're going to be looking at millivolts, and then hit generate sign. Make sure your 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 volumes on your computer are about mid range on everything. Hit generate your sine wave. Look at your meter and see what reading you get. I'm getting 112.4 millivolts. So I'm going to enter that. I'm going to type 112 millivolts RMS. I'm going to Stop my generator. That'll allow me to hit this estimate peak output. That's where it calculates out and decides what should be in there. Once it's done that, you can hit accept. And now we have to do the next step. Now you can use your sound card to generate this uh, if you choose. In my case, I'm using my signal generator and I'm going to put the positive output, or I should say the output onto the input, line input left channel of my cable and hook the ground to the ground. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to kick on my generator at 1,000 kilohertz and 500 millivolts peak to peak. Now, you don't have to use 500. That's what I chose to do. So I'm going to kick it on. And once I know there's a signal there, go over here and you enter how much you're outputting. In my case, it's 500, but it's millivolts peak. And once you're doing that, while you're putting the signal on, hit estimate peak input. And it's going to do some reading. It's going to tell you to wait. It's going to calculate out. It's going to calibrate itself. And it takes a few seconds. There you go. Okay, once you've done that, hit accept here, hit OK here, and we're ready to go. In fact, we're putting out a 500 millivolt, 1 kilohertz signal. We could literally turn this on. We're looking at my signal generator now. We can see that I'm getting a total harmonic distortion of 0.078%. That's not too bad. Imagine that we change frequency, it would be it would show up as distortion, right? So I'm going to start turning the frequency up a little bit. I'm 25 hertz off, and it thinks it's close to total harmonic distortion. But if I bring it back to 1,000 hertz right there, you'll see the distortion reads low, much lower. So that's my signal generator. If I turn it off, okay, now we. Uh, we got 100% total harmonic distortion because there's nothing but noise. With that in mind, now I'm going to stop and take a moment and go set up the amplifier so that we can let the audio card send out a signal from the source generator and actually read the distortion coming back. So give me a minute. I'll be right back with you. Okay, so we're all hooked up. Let me turn this signal generator off, quiet things down. We've still got the power supply running now. So this is powered by 12 volts. We're hooked up. We've got the input to the amp coming from the speaker and ground. We've got the output going back to the line in and the ground. We've got 12 volts coming in. 
So we should be able to send audio to this, amplify it, and send it back out to the computer to test. So let me start the uh, analyzer, turn off, oh no, I want the source running. And right now, if we look at 1K, it looks like we might have a signal. It's down pretty low, and we got pretty high THD. So let me start turning the audio level up. You should see that peak start coming up. It is. And notice our THD is starting to fall at the bottom down here. It's starting to come down because I'm getting up out of the noise. So I'm getting in, into a reasonable volume at this point, and we're getting down around 3%. So we keep going up, and we're going to find a sweet spot somewhere where it gets as low as it's going to get. That's about 1.5% there. And then as I go on up, it's going to go back up. It's going to go up to here it's 4%. That 4% is because we're flat topping and the distortion is kicking in. So if I back off just a little, now I'm getting around 1.035, oh, somewhere in there, percent. And that's going to be my total harmonic distortion. Now that's also going to include any distortion from the sound car, which should be fairly low, but there's going to be some in there. So this doesn't give you an exact reading. It's more of a relative. And what's what's going to work for you on that is if I was testing that other amp and I hooked it up, I'd be able to get an idea of the two comparison. That's that that would be what this would be a benefit for. This is Arda. It can do a lot of other things. It can do frequency responses. It'll tell you the response. And this looks like the amp has a much higher output up here. But I think if we turn off, or this sound card, I think if we turn it off, we're going to notice that even with no signal going in, you're seeing this as noise. I, I think the input on the sound card is noisier at higher frequency. Now, this is an analyzer, a spectrum analyzer, free. It's a low frequency one, but you can go, if you right click, you can go um, to 24,000 Hertz. I update this. So now you have your own spectrum analyzer, about 20. What is the bottom? I'm not sure what the bottom is. I said zero earlier, but I'm not sure that's true. Let's try zero. Got it, you can't go zero. Says you can go to point one. So point one, let's update. Yeah, no, you can't get to point one. It looks like two, three. So let's try three. Just curi curiosity. Okay, so you could do three. So you can get from three hertz up to twenty-four thousand hertz. So you, there you go. So it's a great little piece of software. There's, if you wanted to measure your speaker response, you can hook a microphone up to the computer, feed the audio to the speaker and, and get that. If you wanted to get your total harmonic distortion from your speakers, you could do that. There's a lot of things you could do in here. Uh, it's really designed around audio enthusiasts, but it works great for us for testing amplifiers and such. So I hope this was a, you know, a little bit educational. You learned something, learned about a piece of software. I'll put the link to this in the description so you can go find it if you'd like to. And hey, thanks for hanging out with me. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned something. Hope you'll hit that subscribe button if you haven't. Really hope you'll hit the like. And hey, if you got questions, anything, put it in the comments. I love comments. Hope to catch you in the next video.